Within the fast-growing air freight field, several devices have been developed to shorten the work time required for handling and loading cargo. In this direction, to help fleet operators realize a broader margin of profit, a cargo elevator of unique design is submitted by Lockheed. Known as the Aerolift, this mobile, powered elevator features a 10 by 10 foot platform which raises 13,000 pounds to a height of 12 feet in a minute and a half. It can be quickly disassembled, carried aboard a cargo airplane, and at the point of destination can be set up again within an hour by four men. Assembly of the aerolift can be carried out by an untrained crew by following a simple numbering system. The terminal point of each component is clearly numbered to indicate the sequence of assembly. The number one terminal points are connected first with self-locking pins, followed by number two, and so on. After the base framework is assembled, vertical supports are installed, and the rest of the assembly follows in numerical sequence. Bracing cables are pulled up and locked by pelican hooks integrally attached to each cable. When the stanchions are in place, the arrow lift begins to take on recognizable form. The personnel ladder can be placed on either side of the frame. It is useful during assembly, and later for boarding the raised platform. The motor winch has two synchronized and grooved drums which level wind the galvanized steel cable. Dual cables are routed over micarta pulleys and fastened to the platform side girders. Four sections make up the elevator floor to provide 100 square feet of platform. The last section is secured with self-locking pins. A sectionalized dock board is hooked on the rear edge of the platform for bridging the gap between the airlift and the airplane cabin floor. The sectionalized design compensates for various airplane attitudes. With all sections secured, the ramp and dock board are each nine feet wide. To make the unit mobile, the hard rubber-tired wheels are extended hydraulically. With the demountable tow bar in place, the airlift can be towed over unpaved airfields at speeds up to eight miles an hour. When the castering elements on the rear wheels are locked, the aerolift can be maneuvered by a towing vehicle. Padded bumper guards protect the airplane fuselage against damage while the elevator is in use. The release of hydraulic pressure at the wheels lowers the aerolift onto leveling jacks. These manually operated jacks, one at each corner, are raised or lowered to level the aerolift and are guided by indicators attached at three places on the base frame. The 16-foot power cable, permanently attached to the rear frame, can be plugged into any 24-28 volt outlet, the airplane's power supply, or an auxiliary power unit, or any ground source. These ramp tabs accommodate wheeled loads, and their flexible design is arranged for adjustment to uneven ground surfaces. The distribution of loads over the platform floor is not a critical factor. During tests, 26,000 pound static loads were concentrated on one half the area, and 13,000 pound operating loads were raised using only one half the platform. The 15 foot retractable control cable enables the operator to work the platform from the ground, from inside the airplane, or from the platform itself. The hoisting system contains a mechanical load brake to prevent the platform from descending in the event of a power failure. Under such conditions, the platform can be lowered by a manually operated brake release. Automatic limit switches prevent the platform from being raised above 12 feet or below six inches.
To facilitate the transfer of large items, two pulley blocks are furnished with the airlift. These can be fed into fittings, which are provided in a convenient grid pattern over the platform floor. The platform can be stopped at any desired height, so that cargo can be moved directly onto truck beds. For smaller size airplane doors, the width of the platform dock board can be reduced by removing any number of dock board sections. In addition to cargo handling, the aerolift makes an excellent platform for maintenance work. And to enlarge on this important function, designs are being considered for such accessories as an engine saddle, propeller sling, and a shelter for working personnel. This equipment will increase the value of the aerolift as a piece of maintenance equipment to be used in all climates under normal as well as emergency conditions. This then is the aerolift, air transportable, mobile, practical. A strong and efficient tool for cutting down cargo handling hours and costs for military and commercial operators. Additional details can be had from the Spare Parts Division, Lockheed Aircraft Corporation, Burbank, California. This is a demonstration of Boeing's forward side door pallet transfer system, showing the speed, efficiency, and safety with which palletized cargo can be transferred in or out of the Boeing cargo jet. This being a simulated power off situation, the 7.5 by 11 foot door is raised manually as a standard forklift equipped with interim pallet staging is positioned beside the aircraft. The staging on which roller conveyor units are mounted is raised to the level of the aircraft floor and is aligned with the doorway. A safety space is established and maintained between the staging and the aircraft at all times. The brakes of the forklift are then locked and remain locked throughout the transfer operation, converting it to a stationary elevator, and the staging is lowered for alignment of the truck bed. This ground loading system utilizes standard off-the-shelf roller conveyor components which can be attached to the staging platform and any truck bed. In the aircraft, the ball transfer and roller conveyor units are designed for minimum weight and usable space penalties, yet transmit payload weight directly to the basic cargo jet structure. Only a small crew is required for efficient operation, and since no special skills are needed and standard equipment is used, crews are easily trained. Inside the aircraft, palletized cargo is restrained on the rollers by pallet space stops and side rails. No other tie-downs are required. Now properly positioned with respect to both the airplane and the truck, the staging, on which are mounted standard roller conveyor units, is raised for the first pallet in the aircraft doorway. And as it is leveled, the pallet locks in the doorway are cleared and the stops at the forward end of the ball transfer unit are cleared. The pallet is then moved by the man on the staging over the ball transfer unit and is positioned on the staging where it is held by stops. The first pallet is lowered to the truck, the stops are cleared, and the pallet is moved onto the truck. Simultaneously, the next pallet to be offloaded from the airplane is moved into position. Pallets are easily moved into position on the truck by two men. This loading system is also particularly well suited to handling containerized cargo. 
The next pallet is ready for transfer. The staging is raised, leveled with the aircraft, and quickly adjusted to the changing level of the airplane. Use of the forklift also permits easy adjustment of the staging to conform to changes in the level of the aircraft floor as the pallet is moved out. Manpower alone is sufficient to move pallets at safe speed. Simple and easily operated stops hold the pallet in position on the roller conveyor section of the staging, and side railings contribute to personnel safety. An additional safety factor should be noted. The tines of the forklift are fitted into channels in the staging floor, and the points of the forklift tines are never pointed toward the airplane. Unloading is done quickly, safely, and easily. The basic components used here were a forklift, a flatbed truck, and a platform. The ball transfer unit permits movement of pallets in any direction. Balls are spring-loaded to prevent damage to the lower surface of pallets and are arranged in staggered rows to distribute the wear on the pallet. This is a demonstration of the facility and safety with which loaded pallets can be moved over the ball transfer unit. The pallet is guided by retractable locks, which are cleared for transfer of the pallet from the cargo jet doorway to the staging. The ball transfer unit section in the doorway provides a versatile, maintenance-free method of moving loaded pallets safely by manpower alone. This cargo handling system breaks away from the notion that an aircraft cargo loading system need be complicated. Loading the aircraft is begun by positioning the forklift leveling the staging with the truck bed, moving the pallet onto it, and raising it to the level of the aircraft floor. With the loading of each pallet, there is some change in the level and the fore and aft slope of the aircraft floor, of course, but the change does not greatly affect the movement of loaded pallets in the aircraft. And, just as in unloading, the mass of the forklift may be adjusted to compensate for differences between the slope of the floor of the aircraft and the staging platform. Pallet loads are shaped to conform to the aircraft's fuselage. Light disposable or knockdown containers conforming to the fuselage may also be used. Loading and unloading need not be done on a level surface. This system operates equally well on the standard cargo loading ramp gradient. Now that this system of cargo handling has proved to be adequate in test situations, further improvement will come from refinements of design. Using this system, nine pallets of the 463L type can be offloaded and nine more loaded into a C-135 airplane in 45 minutes. Each of the nine pallets will accommodate up to 8,000 pounds of cargo. Using the equipment shown here, a small crew can unload and load an airplane so quickly that turnaround time is no longer measured in hours. It is measured in minutes.
This film is not a stage presentation, but a photographic record of Boeing's first demonstration of his cargo loading system, showing the speed, efficiency, and safety with which palletized cargo can be unloaded and loaded onto a Boeing jet cargo transport. This is a simulated non-power situation, and the door is opened manually as the forklift moves into position beside the airplane, and the staging is raised to the level of the airplane floor. A safety gap is maintained between the staging and the aircraft at all times. Now positioned, the forklift brakes are locked to convert it to a stationary elevator. The staging is then lowered and leveled with the truck bed. This system utilizes standard external roller conveyor components which can be attached to and removed from the forklift platform and any truck bed. The roller conveyor units in the aircraft are designed to utilize existing tie-downs. Consequently, they are quickly and easily removed or installed in the aircraft. A small, readily trained crew is all that is required, since all cargo pallets are moved on free-running rollers. Inside the airplane, palletized cargo is tied down on the rollers by pallet spaced stops and side rails. No other tie-downs are required. Now properly positioned with respect to both the airplane and the truck, the staging, on which are mounted standard roller conveyor units, is raised for the first pallet in the aircraft doorway. And as it is leveled, the pallet locks in the doorway are cleared. And the stops at the forward end of the ball transfer unit are cleared. The pallet is then moved by the man on the staging over the ball transfer unit and is positioned on the staging where it is held by stops. The first pallet is lowered to the truck. The stops are cleared, and the pallet is moved onto the truck. Simultaneously, the next pallet to be offloaded from the airplane is moved into position. Pallets are easily moved into position on the truck by two men. This loading system is also particularly well suited to handling containerized cargo. The next pallet is ready for transfer. The staging is raised, leveled with the aircraft, and quickly adjusted to the changing level of the airplane. Use of the forklift also permits easy adjustment of the staging to conform to changes in the level of the aircraft floor as the pallet is moved out. Manpower alone is sufficient to move pallets at safe speed. Simple and easily operated stops hold the pallet in position on the roller conveyor section of the staging, and side railings contribute to personnel safety. An additional safety factor should be noted. The tines of the forklift are fitted into channels in the staging floor, and the points of the forklift tines are never pointed toward the airplane. Unloading is done quickly, safely, and easily. The basic components used here were a forklift, a flatbed truck, and a platform. The ball transfer unit permits movement of pallets in any direction. Balls are spring-loaded to prevent damage to the lower surface of pallets and are arranged in staggered rows to distribute the wear on the pallets. This is a demonstration of the facility and safety with which loaded pallets can be moved over the ball transfer units. The pallet is guided by retractable locks, which are cleared for transfer of the pallet from the cargo jet doorway to the staging. 
The ball transfer unit section in the doorway provides a versatile, maintenance-free method of moving loaded pallets safely by manpower alone. This cargo handling system breaks away from the notion that an aircraft cargo loading system need be complicated. Loading the aircraft is begun by positioning the forklift, leveling the staging with the truck bed, moving the pallet onto it, and raising it to the level of the aircraft floor. With the loading of each pallet, there is some change in the level and the fore and aft slope of the aircraft floor, of course. But the change does not greatly affect the movement of loaded pallets in the aircraft. And, just as in unloading, the mass of the forklift may be adjusted to compensate for differences between the slope of the floor of the aircraft and the staging platform. Pallet loads are shaped to conform to the aircraft's fuselage. Light disposable or knockdown containers conforming to the fuselage may also be used. Loading and unloading need not be done on a level surface. This system operates equally well on the standard cargo loading ramp gradient. Now that this system of cargo handling has proved to be adequate in test situations, further improvement will come from refinements of design. Using this system, nine pallets of the 463L type can be offloaded and nine more loaded into a C-135 airplane in 45 minutes. Each of the nine pallets will accommodate up to 8,000 pounds of cargo. Using the equipment shown here, a small crew can unload and load an airplane so quickly that turnaround time is no longer measured in hours. It is measured in minutes. March 1959. Subject, cargo loadability. In order to demonstrate the new loading system, this full-scale mock-up was built to the exact dimensions of the Boeing cargo jet airplane. This was the first life-size test for the jet age concept of complete integration between the airplane and its custom-tailored cargo loading system. An Army driver made two practice trips with this big semi-trailer, then proceeded to back it into the airplane with style. The inclined ramp can take this 25-ton capacity trailer and more. As the trailer eases in, clearance measures about three inches on each side.
These facilities and methods have grown out of nearly two years' intensive study by Boeing and by the cargo specialists retained as consultants for the cargo jet program. Inside the cargo jet fuselage, there are tie-downs able to restrain 35,000 pounds apiece, and the treadways are wide enough and strong enough to take the trailer with ease. With minor disassembly, the Bomark missile goes aboard, and there's plenty of clearance on all sides. By jet lift, this Bomark can be on the launching pad in half the time it's taking to get there by air today. This 90 millimeter self-propelled gun was loaded fully assembled, weighing about 13,000 pounds. Again, inside the cargo jet, tie-down presented no problem. On the new 13-degree ramp, this M211 truck was winched inside in less than two minutes. This is the 6x6 procured by Army and Air Force in large quantities. The ramp itself may be stowed in the lower cargo hold of the jet. Treadways are wide enough to take small as well as large vehicles. This is a three-quarter ton truck with a ton and a half water trailer in tow. This is the M35, a two and a half ton truck with a front axle weight of nearly 6,000 pounds. The ramp treadways were designed to take this kind of weight and more. Treadways inside the cargo jet were built to take the same kind of stresses and to accommodate the varying axle sizes of vehicles large and small. There are about four tons of cargo here, and the driver of the high lift truck had no trouble in positioning the 8 by 10 pallet. At the capstan winch, one man has positive control of the entire loading operation. The winch operates from airplane or ground power sources. One man can handle the loading of these specially designed pallets by using the winch or by pushing the load into the cargo jet. When the airplane is in the so-called kneeling position, these flexible pallets are brought into use. By jacking the airplane at the front spar, the cargo entryway is lowered to truck bed height. Loading and unloading can be done directly from trucks. This again is a standard size 8 by 10 foot pallet. This is the lightweight winch. It weighs less than 200 pounds. It can pull 32,000 pounds when additional blocks are hooked on. The tensionometer measures drawbar pull. Highest load registered during these tasks was 5,600 pounds. This is a model of the transporter understudy as part of the rapid loading system. The transporter can be towed from dock to airplane at a speed of 20 miles per hour. Final positioning is done by the transporter's integral motors. For faster offloading of shipments at intermediate stops, 
the big forward cargo door may be used. As part of their continuing study of loading methods, Boeing engineers have analyzed actual airline operation of the 707 jetliners. These scenes were taken at San Francisco International Airport. The lower lobe of the cargo jet fuselage is similar to these 707 cargo compartments, enabling the cargo jet operator to use these modern loading devices proven in airline service. Design of these lower holds permits loading the cargo jet from four different openings all at the same time. The Boeing cargo jet and its integrated loading system were designed to permit completion of the load and offload cycles in the time it normally takes to service the airplane for turnaround. 100,000 pounds off, 100,000 pounds on, all within the standard turnaround time. The Boeing cargo jet design has been based on the certificated 707 Intercontinental. The cargo jet with turbofan engines will have a top cruising speed of about 600 miles per hour. With a full payload of 100,000 pounds, range is 2,800 miles. The cargo jet can fly non-stop across the Atlantic with its 65,000 pounds of freight aboard. And back of the cargo jet design, airline experience that gives assurance of operational reliability. With the new loading equipment and methods developed by specialists in the air freight field, the Boeing cargo jet system provides the most efficient kind of airlift. The concept of fully integrated cargo handling. The concept of cargo movement on the ground as rapid and efficient as the jet lift plane in the sky. This report from the transport division Boeing Airplane Company. This is the new Lockheed Model 1049B Super Constellation. It is 18 and 4 tenths feet longer than previous constellations and introduces a new concept of mechanized handling of air cargo. The maximum payload is 38,568 pounds. Maximum takeoff weight, 130,000 pounds. The new super constellation has a cargo capacity in the main cabin of 4,875 cubic feet and in lower deck compartments, a total of 693 cubic feet for a grand total of 5,568 cubic feet. Available for the first time in a new airplane is the AeroTrusty cargo conveyor in the main cabin. There are large cargo doors, both front and rear. The ease and speed with which this giant cargo carrier may be loaded and unloaded is shown in scenes which follow. External loading devices to be seen are a special Lockheed-developed cargo elevator called the Aero Lift at the rear door and a conventional forklift at the front door. This loading dock, crowded with material consigned for air shipment, symbolizes the ever greater use of aircraft for movement of freight. All of the cargo shown on the dock and more can be carried in one trip on the new Constellation. Included in the shipment is this extremely long crate, which is easily accommodated in the long fuselage of the new constellation. The crate is 69 feet long, 4 feet 1 inch high, and 10 inches wide. First item to be loaded is this R4360 engine shipping container. The forward end of the container rests on a pair of four-wheel dollies, while two cargo lever dollies are used to support and guide the container from the rear. It rolls easily onto the platform of the aero lift, shown here in its down position, which is just six inches above ground level. The elevator consists of four vertical stanchions upon which a level platform moves up or down. 
It does not depend upon the airplane for support, may be moved about on its own set of rubber-tired wheels, and may be easily dismantled and carried in the lower cargo compartments of new constellations. The elevator's outboard ramp consists of serrated sections which adapt themselves to irregularities on the ground surface. When the platform reaches its desired level, an inboard serrated ramp lets down onto the cabin floor. A cable from the Constellation's cargo conveyor is then attached to the inboard end of the container, and as the container moves into the fuselage, all pulling power is being provided by the cargo conveyor within the airplane. Cargo lever dollies are being used for steering purposes only. This rear door of the Constellation is 9 feet 4 and 1 half inches wide and 6 feet and 1 half inch high. Now that the container has been swung around into alignment with the cabin, it moves easily to the desired tie-down position, with the cabin conveyor providing all pulling power. From inside the airplane, an engine loading operation looks like this. Here is a J-33 jet engine container, which weighs over 4,000 pounds when loaded. Note the cable attached to the forward end of the container. This cable passes around a snatch block on the left, and then to the cargo conveyor in the foreground. The man at the left is controlling movement of the cargo conveyor by means of the long extension cord which leads from the switch in his hand to an automatic take-up reel amidships in the cabin ceiling. After removal of the cable from the snatch block, straightaway pull from the floor conveyor swings the wheels of the dollies around to bring the container into alignment with the cabin. Here again, the only manual effort required is for steering. The conveyor continues to pull the cargo until the desired tie-down position is reached. A large center of gravity travel in this airplane permits wide latitude in load placement. The cabin floor will take loads of 300 pounds per square foot or 1,000 pounds per running foot. There is no limitation on wheel loads permitting this heavy cargo to roll easily on its four-wheel dollies developed by Lockheed. Here's another kind of cargo, a Jeep being driven under its own power onto the Constellation aero lift. Chocks are placed under the wheels. Safety strap is secured. And the platform starts upward. If desirable, the outboard ramp of the elevator may be raised to form a tailgate when lifting certain types of cargo. Total capacity of the lift is 10,000 pounds, and the platform withstands a concentrated load of 500 pounds per square foot. The platform is 10 feet square. It travels from the ground to the airplane door height in approximately 30 seconds, drawing power from the airplane's electrical system or from ground sources, whichever is convenient. The ample dimensions of the airplane's door, combined with the nine and a half foot width of the cabin, allow the Jeep to be driven directly to its tie-down position. Floor tie-down fittings are provided in an 18.4 inch grid. Working loads of 2,400 pounds are permissible on fittings in the main cabin floor. The wall fittings have working capacities of 800 to 3,000 pounds. While cargo continues to be loaded at the rear door, loading can also proceed at the front door. Here a forklift is being employed for putting miscellaneous cargo aboard. Dimensions of this forward door are five feet one and a half inches in width with maximum height of six feet four and a half inches. Ample size of the airplane's cabin leaves plenty of working room around both door areas as well as space for temporary stacking of empty pallets. For rapid operational turnarounds, or for stops at intermediate points, simultaneous loading and unloading of the same airplane may often be desirable. The size of the Constellation makes this entirely feasible. While cargo is being put aboard at the forward door, offloading can be taking place in the rear of the airplane, or vice versa. The Constellation cabin conveyor system may be operated from any point in the airplane and moves cargo either forward or aft, can be utilized alternately for the front door or the rear door as needed. Length of the Constellation cabin is in excess of 80 feet, 
greater than that of two standard railroad boxcars. Its maximum width is 10 feet 4 inches, and maximum height to ceiling is 7 feet. Now miscellaneous cargo is being put aboard at the rear of the airplane. In a typical operation, the cart seen moving onto the platform would be loaded at the air freight terminal and brought to the plane in trackless trains. Detached two or three at a time, they are moved onto the platform and from there will go directly into the cabin and to their stowage position in the airplane. Thus the cargo stays on the same cart from the time it leaves the terminal or warehouse until it is stowed without intermediate handling. The roominess of the Constellation's cabin makes it possible to unload several carts simultaneously or for simultaneous loading and unloading at intermediate station stops. Carts which are already emptied of their cargo may be rolled aft of the door to make room for incoming carts. Now the empties are moved out for return to ground level. While the lift is returning to the ground, handlers there can be detaching additional loaded carts from the trackless train and aligning them for movement onto the elevator. Offloading operations are also expedited by use of the cargo conveyor. Here men are rigging a cable on a box of cargo which is to be offloaded. To obtain a lateral pull on the box, the cable passes around a portable snatch block at the right called a pogo stick, which fits over floor or seat studs. This shows how the cable is looped over a moving chalk of the aerotrusty conveyor. These chalks, called donkeys, may be positioned wherever desired in the endless chain-link conveyor which runs beneath the floor channel. In response to the conveyor's pull on the cable, the heavy box slides out to the center of the cabin without disturbing cargo on either side of it. Now the cable is disengaged from the pogo stick, giving the conveyor a straightaway pull on the box in order to move it to the rear cargo door opening. Notice that no manual effort is required from any member of the crew except for steering direction of the box. A donkey may also be used in the conveyor chain for pushing purposes. Here the donkey is placed in the conveyor behind the box of cargo a procedure which is more convenient when a one-man unloading operation is desired. In more confined space, two pogo sticks are used in combination. The extra stick in the center keeps the conveyor cable from fouling on the cargo seen at the right. These pogo sticks fit into standard floor fittings and can be placed wherever desired in the cabin floor. Once the box has been moved to cabin center line, a direct pull from the conveyor will move the box to the rear. Once more, only sufficient effort to guide the box need be exerted by the crew. By using the Constellation cabin conveyor and exterior elevator at the rear cargo door, an entire load of miscellaneous cargo can be put aboard this new Constellation in a three or four hour period by one man. The easy air cargo procedures which have been shown here are not a dream of the future. They are at hand for both commercial and military cargo services. The first of the new bigger constellations are already flying, and following them on the production line are the mighty transports that will set new records in cargo performance. Lockheed Constellation cargo airplane, designated C-121C by the Air Force and the R-701 by the Navy. This new airplane is 18 and 4 tenths feet longer than previous models of the Constellation. 
The new constellation has a cargo capacity in the main cabin of 4,770 cubic feet, and for lower deck compartments, a total of 693 cubic feet, for a grand total of 5,463 cubic feet. Standard equipment includes the Aero Trusty cargo conveyor in the main cabin. There are large cargo doors both fore and aft. Maximum payload is 33,352 pounds. Takeoff weight is 130,000 pounds under standard conditions. A demonstration of the airplane's loadability in the scenes which follow employs two external loading devices. At the rear door, a special Lockheed developed cargo elevator called the Aerolift, and at the front, a conventional forklift. This loading dock, crowded with material consigned for air shipment, symbolizes the ever greater use of aircraft for movement of freight. All of the cargo shown on the dock and more can be carried in one trip on the new constellation. Included in the shipment is this extremely long crate, which is easily accommodated in the long fuselage of the new constellation. The crate is 69 feet long, 4 feet 1 inch high, and 10 inches wide. First item to be loaded is this R4360 engine shipping container. The forward end of the container rests on a pair of four-wheel dollies, while two cargo lever dollies are used to support and guide the container from the rear. It rolls easily onto the platform of the aero lift, shown here in its down position, which is just six inches above ground level. The elevator consists of four vertical stanchions upon which a level platform moves up or down. It does not depend upon the airplane for support, may be moved about on its own set of rubber-tired wheels, and may be easily dismantled and carried in the lower cargo compartments of new constellations. The elevator's outboard ramp consists of serrated sections which adapt themselves to irregularities on the ground surface. When the platform reaches its desired level, an inboard serrated ramp lets down onto the cabin floor. A cable from the constellation's cargo conveyor is then attached to the inboard end of the container and as the container moves into the fuselage, all pulling power is being provided by the cargo conveyor within the airplane. Cargo lever dollies are being used for steering purposes only. This rear door of the Constellation is 9 feet 4 and 1 half inches wide and 6 feet and 1 half inch high. Now that the container has been swung around into alignment with the cabin, it moves easily to the desired tie-down position with the cabin conveyor providing all pulling power. From inside the airplane, an engine loading operation looks like this. Here is a J-33 jet engine container, which weighs over 4,000 pounds when loaded. Note the cable attached to the forward end of the container. This cable passes around a snatch block on the left and then into the cargo conveyor in the foreground. The man at the left is controlling movement of the cargo conveyor by means of the long extension cord which leads from the switch in his hand to an automatic take-up reel amidships in the cabin ceiling. After removal of the cable from the snatch block, straightaway pull from the floor conveyor swings the wheels of the dollies around to bring the container into alignment with the cabin. Here again, the only manual effort required is for steering. The conveyor continues to pull the cargo until the desired tie-down position is reached. A large center of gravity travel in this airplane permits wide latitude in load placement. The cabin floor will take loads of 300 pounds per square foot or 1,000 pounds per running foot. There is no limitation on wheel loads permitting this heavy cargo to roll easily on its four-wheel dollies developed by Lockheed. Here's another kind of cargo, a Jeep, being driven under its own power onto the Constellation Aerolift. Shocks are placed under the wheels. Safety strap is secured. And the platform starts upward. If desirable, the outboard ramp of the elevator may be raised to form a tailgate when lifting certain types of cargo. Total capacity of the lift is 10,000 pounds and the platform withstands a concentrated load of 500 pounds per square foot. 
The platform is 10 feet square. It travels from the ground to the airplane door height in approximately 30 seconds, drawing power from the airplane's electrical system or from ground sources, whichever is convenient. The ample dimensions of the airplane's door, combined with the nine and a half foot width of the cabin, allow the Jeep to be driven directly to its tie-down position. Floor tie-down fittings are provided in an 18.4 inch grid. Working loads of 2,400 pounds are permissible on fittings in the main cabin floor. The wall fittings have working capacities of 800 to 3,000 pounds. While cargo continues to be loaded at the rear door, loading can also proceed at the front door. Here a forklift is being employed for putting miscellaneous cargo aboard. Dimensions of this forward door are five feet one and a half inches in width with maximum height of six feet four and a half inches. Ample size of the airplane's cabin leaves plenty of working room around both door areas as well as space for temporary stacking of empty pallets. For rapid operational turnarounds or for stops at intermediate points, simultaneous loading and unloading of the same airplane may often be desirable. The size of the Constellation makes this entirely feasible. While cargo is being put aboard at the forward door, offloading can be taking place in the rear of the airplane or vice versa. Since the Constellation cabin conveyor system may be operated from any point in the airplane and moves cargo either forward or aft, it can be utilized alternately for the front door or the rear door as needed. Length of the Constellation cabin is in excess of 80 feet, greater than that of two standard railroad box cars. Its maximum width is 10 feet 4 inches, and maximum height to ceiling is 7 feet. Now miscellaneous cargo is being put aboard at the rear of the airplane. In a typical operation, the cart seen moving onto the platform would be loaded at the air freight terminal and brought to the plane in trackless trains. Detached two or three at a time, they are moved onto the platform and from there will go directly into the cabin and to their stowage position in the airplane. Thus, the cargo stays on the same cart from the time it leaves the terminal or warehouse until it is stowed, without intermediate handling. The roominess of the Constellation's cabin makes it possible to unload several carts simultaneously or for simultaneous loading and unloading at intermediate station stops. Carts which are already emptied of their cargo may be rolled aft of the door to make room for incoming carts. Now the empties are moved out for return to ground level. While the lift is returning to the ground, handlers there can be detaching additional loaded carts from the trackless train and aligning them for movement onto the elevator. Offloading operations are also expedited by use of the cargo conveyor. Here men are rigging a cable on a box of cargo which is to be offloaded. To obtain a lateral pull on the box, the cable passes around a portable snatch block at the right called a pogo stick, which fits over floor or seat studs. This shows how the cable is looped over a moving chalk of the aero trusty conveyor. These chalks, called donkeys, may be positioned wherever desired in the endless chain link conveyor which runs beneath the floor channel. In response to the conveyor's pull on the cable, the heavy box slides out to the center of the cabin without disturbing cargo on either side of it. Now the cable is disengaged from the pogo stick, giving the conveyor a straightaway pull on the box in order to move it to the rear cargo door opening. Notice that no manual effort is required from any member of the crew except for steering direction of the box. A donkey may also be used in the conveyor chain for pushing purposes. Here the donkey is placed in the conveyor behind the box of cargo a procedure which is more convenient when a one-man unloading operation is desired. 
In more confined space, two pogo sticks are used in combination. The extra stick in the center keeps the conveyor cable from fouling on the cargo seen at the right. These pogo sticks fit into standard floor fittings and can be placed wherever desired in the cabin floor. Once the box has been moved to cabin center line, a direct pull from the conveyor will move the box to the rear. Once more, only sufficient effort to guide the box need be exerted by the crew. By using the Constellation cabin conveyor and exterior elevator at the rear cargo door, an entire load of miscellaneous cargo can be put aboard this new Constellation in a three or four hour period by one man. The easy air cargo procedures which have been shown here are not a dream of the future. They are at hand for both commercial and military cargo services. The first of the new bigger constellations are already flying, and following them on the production line are the mighty transports that will set new records in cargo performance.